All right, a short follow-up video today. Last time we took a look at this circuit here, which is this adjustable sawtooth and triangle wave generator with adjustable rising and falling edges and a couple of neat features. But uh, one of the viewers of that video made a comment and said that this is neat, but how do I generate a simple sawtooth waveform uh, like this sawtooth waveform here? using nothing more than PNP and NPN transistors. So, of course, there's many ways to do that. So I'll show you one example. And uh, it's a neat little trick in the circuit, so it's worth kind of looking at. So the way this is working is uh, we're setting up the, the, you know, the long ramp, if you will, of the sawtooth using a current source uh, with these components here. These two resistors set up a bias voltage on this PNP transistor. Ones up putting about 300 millivolts or so across this resistor here, giving me about 30 microamps of continuous current, uh, you know, current source flowing out of that collector. And that dumping into this 10 nanofarad capacitor gives me a linear voltage ramp. So that's how we get that part of it. But now how do we discharge that capacitor and start over again? And that's this simple circuit over here. And uh, it actually uses these kind of almost back-to-back -back connected PNP and NPN transistors. And this structure is actually very similar to a device called an SCR, but we're using it just a little bit differently. But it's a little bit of a positive feedback circuit. Once, it, once you turn it on, it kind of stays on until it gets starved of current or gets shut off. So uh, the way this works is this. I've got a voltage divider here, which is basically splitting the positive rail. So I've got nine volts here. I've got about four and a half volts here. So I've got four and a half volts appearing at the base of this PNP. When the capacitor voltage increases to the point where it can turn this base emitter junction on, this tr PNP transistor starts conducting. So its collector current then becomes base current for this NPN, turning it on. Once it turns on, then its collector current starts pulling current both from the base and out of here. All right. And by pulling the current out of the base, we're actually turning this transistor on harder. And that basically just reinforces both these transistors being turned on. So what happens is these turn on you know, both really pretty hard. This transistor get collector, or this transistor's collector gets pulled down low and saturates this transistor. So it pulls down here, and therefore, because this is like an emitter follower, it also pulls down on this node, thus discharging this capacitor down to about a diode drop or so, you know, a VBE drop above ground. And then when you get down to that point, uh, it basically shuts itself off because it, there isn't any current anymore available to keep this uh, uh, structure conducting. So when it shuts off, the process repeats itself. The capacitor goes and gets charged again until it hits that threshold and it starts over. And that's what the uh, resulting output looks like on the scope. The circuit is right over here. So here are the kind of back-to-back -back connected, like SCR connected NPN and PNP transistors. There's the PNP transistor that's used as the current source. We take the output onto this, uh, we're looking at on the scope from the capacitor that I'm charging up here, and then you just see the small handful of resistors. Uh, and that's what the result looks like. It's kind of also interesting to look at what's going on at this node here. We can kind of see that a quick discharge action. So on channel 2 of the scope, if we turn that on here, that's that blue trace. So we can see that as the capacitor voltage charges up, once it gets about, you know, six tenths of a volt or so above that four and a half volt uh, bias voltage, that PNP turns on, that starts that regenerative action that turns on the PNP and NPN transistors, bang, it yanks that voltage down, just charges the cap, winds up shutting itself off because it runs out of current, and then the capacitor charges up again, starts all over again. So that's how that circuit works. I thought uh, it would be an interesting one to look at, a really simple sawtooth generator you can build with literally just a small handful of parts. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for all the great comments, and uh, we'll see you next time.